Welcome to the Who's Counting podcast with Cleta Mitchell, the podcast about America's elections. Hello, I'm Cleta Mitchell. Welcome to this episode of Who's Counting with Cleta Mitchell. This is a podcast about all things having to do with elections, how elections are supposed to be run, how sometimes they're not run the way they're supposed to be, and what we as citizens can do about it. And today, you're going to get to hear from one of my very dear friends and a really special guest and someone who works behind the scenes every day to help all of you and all of us to learn what we can do about election integrity or lack thereof uh, all around the country in our hometowns, home counties, and home states. Today, we have Carrie Telasco with us. Carrie is the uh, National Networks Director for the Election Integrity Network. So Carrie, you're usually the one who's putting all these podcasts together, and today you're our guest. Thank you. I know. This is great. I love being in the opposite chair from you, Cleta. This is absolutely a joy. Well, thank you. Um, Carrie, before we get started on what all you're doing now for the Election Integrity Network, um, give everybody a little bit of your background. You have a very uh, rich and varied background, uh, a lot of different things. You are an amazingly talented and uh, you just have so many things that you're engaged in and care about, and you're so talented. <clears throat> Tell everybody a little bit about your background and how you came to be involved with saving our elections. Well, thanks so much. Um, Cleta, I grew up in Massachusetts. Um, they made me leave when they found out I was a conservative, but I kind of cut my teeth when I was a kid. I was a policy nerd and a, and a politics nerd at a very early age. And later in my life, I got into marketing and public relations which started me um, heading toward a conservative think tank when I lived in Dallas. And from then on, I realized I was more interested in the policy itself than uh, promoting the other scholars who I loved dearly because that was my job at the time. But I, I really loved the policy and I thought it really mattered and I thought it was really important. So over the tw last 25 years, I've worked for a number of free market conservative public policy organizations. I'm still a senior fellow at a couple of them. And to me, there's nothing more important than liberty. And um, I've worked both as a writer, uh, a speaker, and also a coalitions director. And I, I hope that, my prayer is that, I take all those skills that I've learned over the last 25 years and pour it all into an election integrity. Because honestly, as a policy analyst, unless we get this right, nothing else nothing else happens. We don't get individual liberty. We don't get parental choice. We don't We don't get low tax and regulation. We have to vote for all those things. And that is why this is such a critical effort as far as I'm concerned. Well, I, I certainly share those concerns. And that's what I always try to tell people. And it seems, it's always seemed to me, you know, I cut my political teeth as a Democrat growing up in Oklahoma and was a Democrat in the legislature. So sometimes I think because I had those uh, early experiences as a Democrat, I really understand that how Democrats and the left, how they think about things and process, political process is so important to the left. And that's why you have all these leftist organizations who are always talking about changing the process and the political process, whether it's campaign finance laws, lobbying laws, um, and certainly when it comes to changing the election laws. And they've always, I've always said for many, many years, something conservatives don't really understand is that but something the left does understand. They believe if you change the process, you will change the policy outcome. And I really think that's what people in America have seen since 2020. They think, oh, whoa, the process was somehow involved in this decision. And now look at all these policy outcomes that we're seeing. So that's a long way of saying that I think you're 100% right. I wish, I do wish that more conservatives would realize that. But the good news is, isn't it amazing all the patriots all over this country who have come, come to us and come together and started thinking about these, the, the political process of elections? It, it absolutely is. And I think um, to one of the fundamentals of what you're speaking about, Cleta, 
we all, everybody, used to think that the way you influenced an election was you gave money to a candidate, or you went out and you knocked on doors, or you phone banked, or, or you just voted for the person that you liked. And that's where all the money went. The money went into the campaigns, um, into the phone banking, into whatever. Now we at Election Integrity Network, and hopefully more and more Americans, are learning that the left has a very different toolbox than, than we do. They are using their money not to finance um, candidates anymore, but basically the billionaires are think that the election offices are up for sale also because everything else is to them. And they think they can buy that. And I think, um, you know, their toolbox is a cash drawer. Our toolbox are people. And I believe that we will ultimately be successful because I think even people who are not ideological or not particularly political are seeing things that are making them very upset and very nervous. And just, you know, quote unquote, regular folks are looking for ways to fix the election system because when they go to the polls, they want to know that the person that they voted for, that that is the absolutely the box that gets checked when it goes through the machine. And I think just regular non-nerdy people um, are just getting very nervous and really looking to get involved. And, and again, that's where we step in. So tell everybody a little bit about, well, let's start with, I refer on these podcasts to the Election Integrity Network. I'm not sure we've ever, I've ever really done it. That's why you're here to do a really deep dive, a deeper dive, more than just a passing reference. So start with, what is the Election Integrity Network? So let's start with what the question always is, right? Right. What's the Election Integrity Network? People ask us this all the time. Is it a think tank? Are you a grassroots organization? Are you a political organization? I think the answer is we're none, in, none of the above, kind of all of the above. We're really a platform for citizens to engage in election integrity. Um, that sounds a little bit vague, but underneath the platform, we have all kinds of programs and initiatives and opportunities and resources for people. So we're kind of like a dorm, like we're <laughs> a giant election integrity dorm, and we want everybody to come in and live with us. And, and we're going to provide you with food and shelter, all the information that you need. So, you know, I think the fact that network is in our name is very telling because we are indeed at, at, at the fundamental level, a network, a platform, an opportunity, a place to come together and a place to learn and become active. So I love that. We're a dorm. I do like that because, um, you know, we really want to incorporate, we don't want to replace or supplant what people may be already doing. Um, I had a meeting last week with a group of people um i was, was giving a presentation in new jersey and they <clears throat> wrote to me ahead of time and asked if they could meet with me i said just come find me when i finished my talk and so we pulled up chairs and sat and talked they've been meeting for two years and they're about 14 to 20 of them and they do a call every week and they work on different aspects of concerns they have about the election system in New Jersey. And um, I said, well, you're basically already start, you've already started to do much of what we tell people to do. So we don't want to supplant that. We want to say, OK, how can we help you? How can we help you be more muscular or answer questions or put you in touch with people who are like you elsewhere? So um, that's one thing that I think that we do we're not trying to build our organization we're trying to build their organization right. does that make sense it absolutely does you know i i often when i'm talking about election integrity network i tell this story i remember when i was a girl scout and we were in our tent and we had mosquito netting on it and somebody asked the girl scout leader how do you make a mosquito net and she jokingly answered they all hold hands that's what we do that's we all hold hands. hands and we make a big net and through the net, we capture a lot of misinformation. We kept capture the bad acts of the liberal left as they try to distort our elections. And we all hold hands with each other. And I think the magic, really, of the Election Integrity Network, honestly, Cleta, it's not you and I and our staff. It's all the members of our coalition, 
all our state coalitions, which we can talk about in a second, the local task forces that de developing inside our big mosquito net and our national working groups. It is all those individuals that, that make the difference because you and I don't get to go to every election office and sit down with the election official and ask questions. But those coalition members do. And what we provide them with is the resources, the background, the material, and the questions so that they feel empowered and comfortable and confident to go forward and do what they know is the right thing to do, A, and B, the more appropriate thing for their particular county, city, state, because we all know they're all different. So what we can provide very specific, very practical, very objective tools and resources to them to get them out there, to get them moving out there in the community. So let's start with Carrie. Um, what are some of the things that, what are the resources? Like I say, I always tell people, go to our website, who's counting.us, or as you say, who's counting us. Um, <laughs> but talk about, all right, break it down. So. We've got a group of people, say in New Jersey. So what would what would we say to them that we have available to help them? Um, starting with the basic, what we have is the, the ability to knit the local task forces together. And again, you know, these are just a bunch of people in a community who have come together, the true definition of a coalition. They've come together because they're concerned in this particular case about the election integrity in their neighborhood. So they're sitting in someone's kitchen table. There's 10 of them and they say, okay, now what do we do? Or five. <laughs> or five, yeah, or however many there are. Um, so we, because we have our statewide coalition calls and, and organizations, and because we have a national series of trainings and working groups, and again, we can delve into that later, they don't have to find a way to knit themselves into the fabric of other local task forces or other statewide co or, or their statewide coalitions, in this case, New Jersey, in your example. We can do that for them. That's where we come in and we say, you know, there's a task force over there and there's a task force over here, and let us introduce you all to each other and move forward. Um, one of the things that we do, Cleta, is um, every other Thursday, the second and fourth Thursday of the month at 7 p.m., and you can find this on whoscounting.us or who's counting us, um, is we have what we affectionately call the newbie call, which is an introduction to election integrity. And we always have at least 50 or 60 people on those calls. And we just go over the 101s with them. This is a coalition. This is the difference between a coalition and a stakeholder. This is what your local group does. This is what your statewide um, does. And also it kind of we walk through definitions of election integrity terms. You know, what is ranked choice voting? What why do voter rolls matter? All this stuff. And it gives them again the confidence that they can do what it is that they want to do. And it is our opportunity to identify people on those calls so that we can indeed knit them together into a an effective statewide coalition of which we have, and I'm terrible with numbers, as you know, I think we have 20 robust statewide coalition calls and more coming online all the time. And for people watching or listening to us today, this isn't just a bunch of chatting and complaining about election integrity. And, you know, we have this problem, we have that problem. It is identifying problems. It is taking a very proactive approach. And again, it's all about the people in the coalition. It is their ability to share with each other problems, resources, solutions, good guys, bad guys, that really makes it so effective. It's a very, very much a verb and not a noun, that is for sure. Well, and you know, none of us, we're all sort of no-nonsense uh Type A women <laughs> that that and a, and a couple of guys we have we have some guys who are also wonderful as uh, team members, um, but we are, I guess maybe I would say we're moms. We you know no whining, yeah. and um, there's been so much whining over the last couple of years, and we just say if you care about what's what you see happening, join us, but you know leave your whining at the door. <laughs> exactly, we don't have any enter. We want to say identify the problem, what are some ways that we might go about trying to fix the problem? So that, to me, is we have to be 
uh, proactive in uh, identifying the problems and trying to come up with solutions. We don't have time to spend uh, complaining about what's gone on before. We want to know what's happened before. We want to be able to dissect it so that we know what we can diagnose it and we can then That's figure right. out how you I identify the problem for sure, but it's not how you fix it. And just let's walk through a little bit, Cleta, about all the all the resources and opportunities we have for people. First of all, we have ourselves. Aside from the other resources, I mean, we are, our Election Integrity Network staff are a resource ourselves for everyone. And we try to be as available as we can by phone, by email, by text to everyone involved in this um, activity. We have your citizen's guide to building a permanent election integrity infrastructure. The citizen's guide is at whoscounting.us. Well, tell people what the citizen's guide, what, what is that? What does that mean? Well, Cleta and I, you and I have joked before that it's like a Bible and we want it to look like a Bible, all dog-eared and markings in it. It is a, for lack of another word, brochure that you can download that walks through absolutely every aspect of election integrity that we can possibly think of going again from starting a local task force to a statewide task force to visiting your election office, which is key, um, to becoming a poll observer, and then walking through what we refer to internally as the eight lanes of uh, election integrity. Again, the list of things, the, the voter rolls, legislative um, vulnerable voters, all those kinds of things. Um, so it's really, it's, it's really a textbook, I guess. It is a, a handbook, textbook, a handbook for election integrity advocates to, um, use either by itself or as we prefer with some of the other resources that we have available to people, including our short, but very effective master classes that are available online. They are four to five minutes long. They are under our resources section on our website, and they sort of walk along with the uh, citizen's guide. So those are videos. They're short videos. Video. You, you, you teach most of them. Uh, I do a couple. Lynn Taylor has done one or two, Ned Jones, and we're going to add some more. We're going to continue to add more. Um, but they're videos that people could show at a meeting. Yes. Uh, watch alone that you could, and as you say, it follows along. It's the videos that follow along with the with the citizens guide, the handbook. So we tell people all the time, don't we, Cleta? No college has ever given a degree in election integrity. Half of us didn't know what we were doing, except for you. Half of us didn't know what we were doing when we were starting. Uh, we, you know, we're like, okay, what is this issue, and what is that issue, and how do we do this? So we're all learning. So for people just really starting out, we want to make sure, again, that they're comfortable, confident, and they don't feel intimidated by anything. So you take the citizen's guide that's on our website, you flip through it, you walk through it. Each master class, as you mentioned, goes along with all the issues in the citizen guide. And we, we encourage people to go on the website and just watch them. But we also encourage people to use them in their meetings, as you mentioned, to use them on their Zoom calls. You can run one on your Zoom call and then have a conversation about it afterwards. It's a, sort of a springboard, um, a place for people to start. And it really helps familiarize everyone with the basics. And then once we're kind of done with the basics, then we work, we work our way to more training and also our national working groups. All voting is local. You may be voting for somebody for president, but you're voting in your home county or your home city. So that's why we've been so focused I, on getting people to pay attention to what is happening in their local election office, because that's where things are really, that's where the rubber meets the road. So that's one of the reasons why we think it's so important for people to get involved locally with some of their friends. You you do a, a special training on coalitions and how to start a task force. What would you tell people? Um, not to do the whole video here, but a couple of the points of, of why, what you tell people and why it matters to think locally. Uh, because as you pointed out, all elections happen down the street from you, where whoever you are, wherever you live, the election is in your area, whether it's for president or governor or local dog catcher, it all happens down the street from you. You're Let's backtrack just a little bit. Because of the way the Constitution laid out voting, 
the statutory requirements and procedures and laws that govern voting are state-based. So if they're good, we have 50 good laws. If they're bad, we're swatting 50 flies plus DC. But at the end of the day, it is the state that determines the voting procedures. Those voting procedures have to be carried out in your election office, your local election office. You may have a great election integrity office, uh, election official that does a wonderful job. You may have one that does a terrible job, or you may have one that is simply uninformed or misinformed about their, what their role might be and what the law might be. So when you start a local task force, one of the most important things for you to do is establish a relationship with your local election office before you do anything else, before you even make the cookies for your next task force meeting. You want to go in pairs, right, Kalita? Always two people. Always be right and polite. I say always bring paper, bring research, bring information, and go have a visit with your local election officer, whether they're your friend or your foe in your mind. They're the only one you have. <laughs> so you have to establish that relationship. And um, I live in Florida, and we have a very active statewide um, Fair Elections Coalition here. And we tell everybody all the time, your job is to be a resource. That is your that is your job. And it is amazing how often all over the country people tell us, you know, my election official wasn't doing X, Y, Z, wasn't checking the signatures properly or wasn't doing this. And we accosted him or her and said, you know, you're not doing this. And they scratched their heads and said, oh, goodness, we didn't know we had to do that, too. <laughs> so you can't always assume fraudulent intent, but sometimes you can assume misinformation intent. And that is why it's so important, because any change that is going to happen is going to happen in your election office. So you tell people to get involved with their local, go see their local election official. And we always, I want to reiterate, we tell people just like going to meet anybody for the first time, don't go in and start yelling at them. That's probably not a good way to make friends. That'll be your first and last meeting. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then um, we it, explain to people the kinds of the areas in which they need to work. Um, the, at the local level. And then um, talk a little bit about knitting that together at the state level. So what we do at the local level is kind of the same as what we do at the state level. We we have our national working groups, and I'll, I'll walk through those, Kalita, for people just quickly. Um, and those are all, as Kalita said, as you said, you know, knitted together. There's a theme here. We have the Citizens Research Project. Um, and again, all of these... Um, uh, national working groups meet either once a week or every other week on a Zoom by call. Zoom. Yeah. And, yeah, by Zoom. And they're all interactive. This isn't us preaching at you. This is very, very much interactive and must be interactive. We have the Citizens Research Project that looks at the left's private dollar donations to election offices and what they are trying to do to manipulate our election system and to confuse it and to make it uh, not as accurate as it should be. Uh, we have the vote by mail and the role of the post office um, uh, working group, which is also very important. And I, I tell you what, Cleta, when I started doing this, I had no idea the impact of what our Ned Jones at Election Integrity Network calls the largest precinct with no observation, which is the post office. That's we right. have uh, a working group on legislative initiatives. And even though every state is different, there are common themes and common problems. And when person from state A says, I have this problem, it makes person from state B wonder if they have that problem too. And again, there's that collaboration and interactivity. Uh, we have an election, uh, election technology group that looks at you know technology, software, machinery, all that stuff. Uh, we have protecting vulnerable voters, and people are surprised sometimes when we tell them who the vulnerable voters are. Military voters are vulnerable. Uh, people with disabilities, the homeless, seniors, um, all that kind of stuff. We have a stop ranked choice voting working group, and we have a voter roll cleanup group. Um, now, that is not to say that that is every issue that is going to pop up in everyone's local election office. There are other ones, but those are the core groups, and those are also the same concerns that local task forces need to look at at the election office that's up their street and assign people as their task force grows 
to cover these issues with their election office. And then again, we knit them together into the state coalition. And then County A can tell County B what happened in their county. And we've, we've seen this in so many places. And it's just so very, very helpful. So again, on whoscounting.us, we have uh, join here. You can click that button and let us know if you're interested or which of these groups you're interested in. And we'll definitely um, get you hooked up with those calls. Well, Carrie, tell us a little bit. You mentioned the newbie call. Um, you, do you have any stories to share from anything that may have come out of the newbie call that uh, people following up with you or um, doing certain things that uh, were gratifying or uh, enlightening and anything you want to share about anything that may have happened on any of those calls since the first of the year when you started them? Yeah, well, I'll tell you. Um, I'm on there with Ned Jones, our Deputy Director of Election Integrity Network. And after a call is over, well, one of the things we always ask people to do on the call is to put their state on there. And we jokingly say to them, um, you may have friends in your state that you didn't know you had till right now. So one of the things we do is we connect those people after the call and make sure that they're all talking to each other. Um, we've had several people, we have several people email us after every single call. And again, we have 50, 60 people. They had no idea they had a state coalition. Um, we've had a couple of times where someone on the newbie call was working on a very specific issue. Um, let's say stopping ranked choice voting in their state, thought they were doing it by themselves, had no idea that there was another organization in the state, or I shouldn't say organization, another group of people in the state um, working on that issue. And that happens over and over and over. And one thing, Cleta, um, I want to tell a little bit of, of a story of how this all knits itself together. It's a great example of something that happened here in Florida. So we are now in May of 2023, and we just came out of our Florida legislative session. We, Our task force was working very hard with the legislature on trying to make the best election integrity bill um, to go through that we could possibly get. And one of the things we saw in there was a line that um, basically, I'm paraphrasing it, obviously, but it said that we have to watch out for poll observers because they're violent. And if they're harassing anybody, we need to charge them with a felony. Well, we all know that does not happen. Um, and we all know that the left is promulgating this line. There was an organization called the Committee for Safe and Secure Elections that was pushing this piece of legislation, this line item in this legislation into the bill. Um, the ladies in our coalition who are working up there said, that sounds, um, the Committee for Safe and Secure Election, doesn't that sound great? We think that's wonderful. They called our Ned Jones, because they were suspicious. They thought it was funny. They called our Ned Jones at Citizens Research Project and said, what is this group? Uh, Ned explained to them it is a left-wing organization trying to dilute every possible kind of um, election protection and is uh, really trying to take out election observers and discourage people from their, their, I would say, constitutional right to observe elections and try to get those crazy conservative election integrity type people out of our elections. So, so our group was able, our group knew to go to Ned. Ned gave them the information. They made a little um, paper. They brought it to the legislators that were working on this and said, this, this is who put this in there. Now, what do you think? And it's gone. It got taken out of the legislation. So that is just a microcosmic example of the many, many things that happen. And again, you and I, Cleta, we weren't on those calls. And uh, it, it, it was the coalition people. It was the grassroots people that actually made that happen. And we have so many examples of that all, all over the place. So I just want to encourage people. Yeah, you don't have a degree in election integrity. Maybe you're not exactly sure what it all means. But those two ladies in our coalition, nine months ago, they didn't either. And they made something really important happen in the state of Florida. So it's uh, to me, it's a very encouraging story. Well, it really is. And they they did amazing work. And uh, there's more to do. And uh, we've identified some of the obstacles that probably we should share with other states because of the experience in Florida with uh, some like a lot of people who work in government, they're not always thrilled to have citizens engaging with them in their offices. And that is something that we have to overcome and address and deal with. It's a lot like a, many, many school boards. 
have not been totally thrilled at having parents showing up at school board meetings saying, what are you doing putting, making my child read these uh, awful texts? So that's to me, that's the closest parallel is that as parents have realized they need to be at the schools and at the school board meetings, citizens are realizing we need to be in the election offices and at the election board meetings. Um, and that is not always met with open arms on the part of the people who are used to basically not having citizens involved at all, except for the League of Women Voters or a couple of leftist groups who have people who've been involved for a long time, but not our side, not conservatives, not people who say, wait a minute, we believe elections should be conducted in accordance with the statutes and with the law. And we're not the ones out there trying to invalidate the statutes and get rid of the laws, which is something the League of Women Voters has been famous for. So I think that that, that's why we are so concerned when we hear this pushback in the way of even statutory provisions to strengthen penalties um, against citizen involvement. I think that's always a little, that's always a little scary, but it's something that we're facing just like parents are facing that. Yeah. And one of the things we always, we always tell our co on our coalition calls or on our national working groups, it, and this is something that I, I believe to be a hundred percent true. There are two aspects to everything that you do in election integrity. Number one is the thing, the initiative, the program, the law change, the statute, the, the procedural adherence, whatever the thing is. The other part of that is just going to your election office. They know you're looking, they know you're watching. I joke that they have heliophobia, which is a fear of sunshine. Uh, they don't like it, but they know you're there. So even if maybe uh, the thing you're really pushing, the initiative, the program, the change, the procedure doesn't actually work as well or go forward the way you wanted, they still know that you're looking. And Cleta, you and I know we've seen a lot of uh, media articles about what we're doing, and that's kind of their biggest fear is, oh my gosh, there's election integrity conserva conservative advocates at the polls. What are we going to do? So they're noticing our presence. And just the presence alone, I think, is a, is a winner. It's a game changer for, for people who really do care about every ballot of every voter of every party, as we do. Well, you know, it's interesting because um, two things that come to mind thinking about that. One is the importance of observers and what we taught all through the last year when we helped recruit, return, train, and deploy uh, election observers. Um, we kept saying, your job is to observe and to document, to observe and to document. Your job is not to fix things on election day because that's not the job of the, it's not the job of the observer. And I think that, um, that, of course, they were, the media, as you pointed out, they were trying to say that somehow we were going to interfere with the election process. And we told everybody, you can't do that. State laws prohibit that. You can observe and observe and observe. And you can document everything you see, but you can't interfere. You can point out things that you can go to the chief judge or whatever the title is and say, excuse me, but X and Y is happening. And that's a violation of this statute. That's the most you can do. But one of the things that I think people don't realize is that in Maricopa County, on election day, November 8th of 2022, we had full coverage of all the election observer slots in Maricopa County at all the voting locations. And they observed and they documented. They documented big, big problems. And even when the election officials were declaring that everything was just fine, we have hundreds of eyewitness reports from election observers and some election workers who wrote down and sent to us what they'd seen. And so now we know what the problems are. We know what needs to be fixed. We wouldn't know that, but for all of those volunteers observing and documenting. And uh, it's all on our website, by the way, uh, chaos in Maricopa County. Go to whoscounting.us and then uh, Maricopa County. We've doc we, we put it all on the website. We removed everybody's names because I didn't, we didn't want people to start getting attacked by the left. They can attack me, and they do, but I didn't want them to do that to our to volunteers. And we removed all vendor names so that we wouldn't get anybody sued for saying something about a vendor. But um, 
but it's all there. It's pretty amazing. It's uh, all there and it's consistent. So Mary Lou over there in this exactly precinct right. had the same problem as Jim over in that precinct who had the same problem as, in, as Bob in that other precinct. And, you know, I, I think, I think, Cleta, one of the reasons we encourage poll observers so much is because we now know without question that it absolutely makes an enormous difference. I, I think that the poll observers get frustrated sometimes when they see something and they can't jump on it right away. But that you're absolutely right. The whole documentation and observation it has changed. It has literally changed the game it, for the better. And we've seen it, you know, Arizona, obviously, as you pointed out, but other counties as well. It, it really makes a, a, a huge difference. Of course, one of the things, the other, the other thing that's come out of the observer program has been there are, are many, many instances where as the observers, as the volunteers have been going to the election offices and watching and being a resource and offering suggestions and being polite, um, they have become a resource to the election office. And now what we're seeing in some places, we saw this in, uh, we've seen it in Virginia, we've seen it in other places. Uh, it actually happened in Maricopa County where observers were, were asked by the election officials, hey, would you like to become one of our workers? one of the people who actually administers the elections. And in Virginia, it's gone from not only that, but to being asked to serve on the election board right. itself. And that we're seeing that all over so that we're getting people who love to, uh, who want to be part of this. And it is a labor of love because it's a very hard work and they're getting into positions of responsibility, which of course I know the left goes berserk when they hear about that, but it's what's happening and they're earning that respect. They're not, you know, bullying anybody. They're not paying anybody to put them in those positions. So those are a couple of ways that the observer program is really, it's manifesting itself really in uh, very fundamentally important ways. Well, and you know, I'm glad you br you mentioned that too, because it reminds me of something else we can segue to, which is um, one of the other resources we bring to the table is the availability of national and state and even local experts, whether they be government officials who are great election integrity advocates or some of the think tank people or the researchers, people at national and local organizations who members of our coalition would not necessarily have the opportunity to hear them teach and inform, but for our calls. And that includes the statewide working groups as well as the national working group calls. And, and the reason I bring that up in regard to poll observers is it's easy enough to train a poll observer, say, all right, here's your pen, here's your pencil, go stand there. If you see anything funky, just let us know. Well, they don't know what funky is from the first start. So, so we've had the opportunity to bring so many of our um, colleagues and friends to these calls to really explain to people about signature verification or about, you know, there's a problem with an ID uh, when someone's checking in or just a myriad of, of things that you just wouldn't in your regular daily life have that opportunity to be exposed to those great, brilliant people who are there to help you. Whether it's, you know, our friends at Capital Research who provide us with the information on the left wing groups, or it's um, Heather Honey of Verity Vote who t tells us about the dangers of overseas ballots coming back in. It just is endless. And, and it's one of the things I love most about Election Integrity Network is that we get to do that for people on a regular basis. Yeah, we get, and we, I've learned so much. I mean, I didn't realize until Heather Honey did her report that the overseas, what I've just always referred to, Actually, in one in one word, overseas military ballots, kind of like it's all one word. Well, come to find out, 2020, 63 percent of the overseas ballots were from civilians, not military or their families. And um, so that begs the question of, OK, so what's going on with that? And then to come to find out that there's no requirement that an ID or proof of citizenship must accompany um, the application for a, a um, for an overseas ballot. 
it's our ballot to be get sent by email. There's no requirement of having any address in the United States. Someone may never have lived in the United States and they're still allowed to vote. Well, okay, but how do we know they're a citizen? And now we know because of Heather's research, there were a, there was a, a planned effort uh, by someone in Canada saying, "Hey, here's how we can all vote in the U.S. election." Well, yeah, and that's I'm pretty scary. On Twitter. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not it's not good, but uh, but we but we were able to learn that because of this wonderful woman in Pennsylvania who started just doing research. She's a researcher, so she just started researching elections. So that's pretty interesting, but. Right. So, Carrie, what would you tell people, people who say this is all overwhelming to me, um, what would you tell them uh, if they care about election integrity? What would you tell them? I would tell them, first of all, um, it's not somebody else's problem and it's not somebody else's problem to fix. It's everybody's problem and it's everybody's problem to fix. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel and you don't have to go get, get a degree in, in this and you shouldn't be intimidated and you should have lots of confidence, you know, contact us at whoscounting.us, sign up for the national working groups. Um, that's a great place to start because when you sign up for one of the working groups of which you may have particular interest, that's when we can connect you to the state coalition that you might not even know exists or you find someone else. So take that first step. Um, take that first step to reach out to us and let us help you. That's our job. That's what gets us up every morning is to help each and every election integrity advocate out there to do their very best and to feel comfortable with what they're doing and, and to feel proud of what they're doing. Really proud because when you put protect, maybe you get in it because something funky happened to your ballot one day and you didn't like it. Think about all the other people you're protecting when you do that. I mean, it really is. It is a wonderful thing to do. I would call it a civic duty, although I really think it's a, a civic responsibility. And, you know, Cleta, you and I realize that there are people out there that are going to work every day and, and taking their kids to soccer practice, and they don't have 10 minutes out of the day really to do anything else, but you do. You can you can participate in this in this process. You don't. It doesn't have to be your full time job. We're there for you um, to make sure that you know how to operate within this universe. Well, and you know, I always say to people, if you don't have time, if you really, really don't have time, then send us twenty five bucks or a hundred bucks or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, help, help us print. You know, a parcel of the citizens guides. Um, you know, the, so. And you can do that on the website also. I don't usually ever ask anybody for money, but you could actually donate on the website. And um, and obviously the left has billions of dollars. And as I always say, we're never going to have the money the left has. We're never going to have all the entities. But what we have is exactly what you said earlier, Carrie, is we have people. We have tens of thousands of what I call the election integrity patriots all over this country who are doing their best to try to help save the election so they can help save our country. And, um, and there, I don't, th I, I wouldn't bet against them. No, not at all. I never would bet against them. I'll take people over cash all day long. <laughs> <laughs> well, Carrie, you do such a wonderful job of, of helping people feel comfortable and training and teaching and thinking of things that will help people be involved in a way so that they're not afraid. Um, and so I just want to thank you uh, for all that you do. You have a lot of responsibilities and uh, you carry them off always cheerfully and with a uh, great uh, professionalism and uh, accomplishments. So thanks for everything that you do. And um, we'll uh, look forward to uh, more videos, more training and more working groups and more success as we uh, continue to fight for what really matters, which is uh, our election systems in America. Yeah, thank you, Cleta. Thank you for leading the effort and for everything that you, you do as well. So it's been a pleasure, that is for sure. Well, thanks so much. And uh, that's uh, this episode of Who's Counting with Cleta Mitchell. Uh, please uh, share this podcast, subscribe, uh, share it with your friends. Be sure, you know, we always wonder when I, we're going to get kicked off of uh, the latest uh, social media platform from big tech. But so please help us. Please help spread the, spread the news and share the word about the importance of being involved in this effort and how people can be involved, how you can be involved. 
And we look forward to seeing you uh, at next week uh, at, with another episode of Who's Counting, the podcast about elections. So with that, goodbye, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for joining Who's Counting with Cleta Mitchell, the podcast about America's elections. Please help us fight big tech censorship. Like and subscribe to this podcast and be sure to share it with your friends. You can become part of this election integrity movement by signing up to join the Election Integrity Network. Go to whoscounting.us. The Who's Counting podcast is produced by the Election Integrity Network.